Thank you for joining me live from the grooming table. I am Amy Lee, certified professional pet groomer since 2003, but it is absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the pet grooming industry so that you can provide the same level of quality care to your beloved pets at home as I provide to my client pets in my professional grooming salon. So having a place to come and learn essential information on dog grooming products, tools, and equipment, that is very necessary these days. And that's why I created this YouTube channel for you and your pets. Welcome, all of you, to Go Groomer on YouTube. I'm so excited to have you here tonight. Before we get started, I have a major announcement. Don't I say this all the time now? Did you know, you probably do, that I have now a free weekly email newsletter. Every Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you will receive my free Go Groomer exclusive newsletter directly to your email inbox every Friday at 8 a.m. You can look forward to it, you can count on it. I'll be there, I'll be in your, in, in your inbox sharing my secrets of the pet grooming industry just a little newsletter once a week to give you some food for thought when it comes to grooming and me being able to share little quick tips and tricks with you on one little topic it's great in the description below you will find a link to sign up completely free and then you must check your email every friday for this amazing dog grooming newsletter that's packed full of secrets to successful dog grooming. They're my secrets. They're all my secrets I gathered and I'm gonna share them for you. But it's fun, I love making the newsletter. This Friday will be my second newsletter. Last Friday was the first one. For those of you who did sign up for it, you are the only ones that have gotten that newsletter and nobody else will ever get it. So sign up guys, it's linked in the description below. It's from me to you and you will love it. I've gotten great feedback on it. I love it too. So what is the topic tonight? Drum roll please. Who's got the drums in the house? I don't hear them. The topic tonight is when to clip your dog before bathing. Pre-clipping. We call it pre-clipping. Pre-clipping means we're doing the clipper work or most of the clipper work before we bathe the dog. Typically professional groomers do not do that, but there are times when it is absolutely necessary. Would you like to know what they are? Of course you will. That's why you're gonna watch this video with me tonight. I have it all locked and loaded for you guys. In this video, I will teach you my golden rule. It is my golden rule on when to clip a dog before the bathing process and when not to. It's, there are times to do both. I prepared two demos for you, not one, but two that's gonna help explain exactly the methods behind the madness of pre-clipping, okay? So you're getting some demos tonight, guys. I love it. The idea is this, saving time. When we are dog grooming any dog, time-saving tactics are very important. So not time savers that encourage us to skip important steps of a groom. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about anything that we can do to speed up the process of grooming dogs safely. Saving time on grooming dogs benefits you and makes the grooming session more pleasing to the dog too. And that's very important. So if you want to create the best dog grooming experience for the pets you groom, assessing the groom before you begin is key taking a look, stepping back, and getting a game plan. We talk about game plans and go time all the time when it comes to grooming, right guys? Assessing the groom before you begin is key. That's your pre-gaming, okay? And if we assess it, that's gonna lead us right directly into our topic today. When to clip your dog before bathing. And is it necessary? Sometimes it is. If you pre-clip a dog prior to bathing, so you haven't bathed it, you might have brushed it out a little bit. If you pre-clip a dog prior to bathing, it is important to note that a final go over with the clipper after bathing, brushing, and drying, it's needed. A final go over with your clipper is needed to ensure a smooth and beautiful finish. But if we pre-clip, most of our clipper work is done in the pre-clipping stage. 
we're just kind of finishing it off with that second go over with the clipper. But there are times when we would do this and there are times when we wouldn't if we're trying to um, save the most time with grooming. Sometimes saving the most time with grooming isn't to pre-clip, okay? So you must be thinking right now, if I have to perform the clipper work twice, if I pre-clip a dog, then how is it beneficial to the dog grooming session? Well, I'm gonna break it all down for you right here, my friends, right here tonight, just like I always do. <laughs> All right, let me tell you something. This is how I determine if I need to pre-clip a dog when beginning the grooming session. There are three things that matter most to me. This is kind of my golden rule. This is leading up to my golden rule. I have an image to show you while I explain this real quick. To determine if I need to pre-clip a dog when beginning a grooming session, there are three things that are most important to me and I'm sharing them with you right now. It is one is the dog's body and legs matted. This is something that I need to know right now before I decide if I'm gonna pre-clip. Number two, in determining should I pre-clip this dog? When was the last time this dog was groomed? And I'm gonna go over these with you in a minute. And the next one is, when was the last time the dog was groomed? That's the number three thing that I must ask myself if I'm going to determine do I need to pre-clip a dog or not. When was the last time this dog was groomed? Was it three months ago? Was it six weeks ago? Was it a long time ago? The six months? You know, it's important to know because why? Because that determines how much coat growth I'm dealing with right now and also possibly the condition of the coat may be very, very poor if this dog wasn't groomed in a long time. So I have to ask myself those things. We're getting ready to watch our first demo here, guys. And when we do, I have a lot to tell you. As I discuss this rule, I'm going to roll some footage of me shaving a rescue dog with a seven blade before bathing. So this is gonna be considered pre-clipping. So we're gonna watch me as I'm explaining these rules to you, the rules of whether or not we pre-clip a dog. So. In that footage, you'll see me clipping a rescue dog, a really awesome dog named Frankie. Um, with a seven blade, he was definitely matted and I had to pre-clip him due to excessive matting and excessive coat growth, lots of it. So demo number one, I'm gonna roll this and I hope my notes cooperates because I got good stuff to share with you guys. All right, so here is Frankie. When we pre-clip a dog before the bath, the rule number one is, is the dog's body and legs matted? As I discuss this rule with you, this we're looking at footage right now of me shaving a dog with a seven blade because he was so matted. This is very important to evaluate, guys, before we begin grooming any dog. Is the dog matted? Is the legs and the body? Because that's the majority of the dog and that's the hardest part to get through on the dog if they are matted. If the dog's body and legs are matted, we are definitely going to have to shave the hair or what we call pre-clip before the bath with a seven blade. This is done to remove an excessive amount of unworkable coat without having to bathe, brush, and dry the dog only to have no choice but to shave it anyway due to the coat's condition. And that ultimately would waste time, right? Which we are talking about time savers and time is valuable during the dog grooming session for both you and your dog. So it's important that we evaluate if the dog is matted. Now, here's something you wanna know. Why is the number seven blade the choice with a matted coat? Simply because if the mats are tied against the skin, the length and the spacing between the teeth on a number seven blade are just right in order to glide between the skin and the mats. It's the spacing on the teeth, between the teeth on a seven blade, really, that allows us to get there, get under the mat. Also, a seven blade is not gonna clip too close to the hair follicle itself. Clipping too close to the hair follicle, like say with a 10 blade, it can damage the hair follicle or it could cause it to become blocked or just problematic. And we don't want that. So you've noticed in the video that I did show you the difference between the teeth and the spacing on the 10 blade as compared to a seven blade. 
um, that was earlier a minute ago in the video. So that is the number one rule, guys. If a dog's coat is matted and you cannot easily brush it out and slide a comb through it, pre-clipping before the bathing process is warranted. Now, what about when to pre-clip a dog before the bath? Rule number two. Rule number two is when was the last time this dog was groomed? Remember, I showed you the rules. Why is it important for you to know this in order to determine if the dog will need to be clipped before bathing? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. I want you to understand it's very important to know this too. And why is that? Think of this, a dog that has a continuously growing coat type, such as say a Shih Tzu, they will grow approximately about a half of an inch of fur every four weeks. If the dog's last haircut was three months ago, you're gonna have about an inch and a half of coat growth to brush, bathe, condition, and dry, followed by one final brush and comb out before attempting to apply the trim. So we would need to brush, bathe, and dry a bunch of coat that we're gonna be trimming off at least about an inch of that coat because the dog was groomed a while ago. So the desired coat length for most dogs haircuts is often about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch of coat. That's what we want to trim it to. So if we've got two, three inches of coat we're dealing with, we have to decide maybe we should be pre-trimming some of this so that we can save time in the drying, bathing, and conditioning stages, which any time we can save time, the dog benefits from that too. You know, does he want to be dried for an hour or 20 minutes? If you ask the dog, they're probably going to say, take the 20 minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. And you want what's best for the dog. So now that we know that we're going to be shortening the coat, that's maybe at three inches to a half of an inch when we approach the clipper work step of the groom, Pre-clipping the coat before the bathing process will prove to be a huge time saver for both you and the pet. And in these cases, I choose to pre-clip the coat as the first step of the groom. However, it is imperative to give the dog one final clip, one final go over with the clippers after the bathing, drying, and brushing process to ensure that nice, pretty, smooth, plush, finished look. But if we pre-trim the dog, we are taking the majority of what we will be taking off for the whole trim will already be taking it off it just won't be real even because the coat is not pristine and clean and pretty so rule number three when to pre-clip a dog before the bath is how much coat length does the dog have currently sitting on our grooming table before we've even begun the grooming session how much coat does the dog currently have? And what is the desired coat length that we're trying to achieve in this grooming session? You have to ask yourself that. So you definitely have to ask yourself that question before you begin a grooming session with any dog. How long is the coat? How much coat am I dealing with right now? What is the desired coat length? If the desired coat length is, um, a half of an inch and we're dealing with three inches of coat we know that we're going to be taking off two and a half inches of coat so it's important so let's let's picture this let's say that you have a returning shih tzu pet client who maintains a six-week grooming schedule so the dog is not in bad shape comes to you every six weeks which is great but the last time you trimmed the dog it was in a longer coat length due to colder weather conditions you know now it's spring spring has sprung and that customer would like a shorter haircut to keep the dog more comfortable and more tidy in the new season so it's not that the dog was unkept it's just that he was wearing a winter trim for a while and now it's spring and it's time to take it back a little bit cool him down the weather's getting hotter the pollens are getting stronger and you know everything is dirty outside or whatever but there's reasons why we want to shorten up the the coat in the spring and summer months for sure they, they always benefit the dog so this means that you will now be removing approximately 
one or more inches of coat length during this grooming session, right? Let me get rid of that. So I'm gonna tell you right now that that is a determining factor for me is when, if I'm gonna pre-clip this dog before the bathing, brushing, and drying process. That's a determining factor, is to determine if I'm shortening this coat down to a half of an inch and he's got two inches, three inches, I need the pre-clip. So those are my three rules to determine that. Back to the top, what were those rules again? In fact, I'll throw them right up here on the screen for you one more time. Take that off, pop that up there for you. The three determining factors are is the body and the legs matted? When was the last time the dog was groomed? And what is the desired coat length for this dog, for this grooming session today? Those are my three determining factors for whether or not I will pre-clip a dog. But what I haven't shared with you yet tonight is what is my golden rule of do I need to pre-clip a dog? Or do I go ahead and brush, bathe, condition, blow dry, and then just do the full haircut? What is my golden rule that determines that for me? Well, stay put, it's coming. <laughs> that wasn't very nice, was it? All right, so this is jumping around again, but let me get back here because we're getting ready to roll our second demo. And I think you're gonna like that second demo a lot as soon as I get there. Very, very unusual. Why this is doing that? Huh. There it goes again. It's almost like somebody is on my computer from another planet. They keep taking away where I'm at. It's very, very strange. Never, ever have I seen this program do this. Ever. Okay. So, I'm just going to say this. We are at the point where we're ready to watch that other demo. Both of these demos, um, that one that you just saw with Frankie, the, the matted dog shaved down, and the demo I'm going to roll down right now for you. They're both linked in the description below for you for you to watch the full informative video. But I did pull out some segments of them so that I could share those important, hit the important notes right here with the topic tonight, which is when do we pre-clip a dog? So part of pre-clipping often is using guard combs on our clippers, right? Over top of our number 10 blade or 15 or a 30. So sometimes using guard combs can be tricky to do pre-clipping because the coat's gummy and tacky. It's, it, it's not clean yet, right? We're pre-clipping. So in this demo that I'm gonna show you, you're gonna see me pre-clipping a big golden doodle, labradoodle, I'm sorry, named Diesel. And I'm gonna show you pre-clipping him pre-bath how the clipper performs, how the clipper behaves and when the coat is dirty. And then I'm gonna show you in that same demo how the clipper behaves after we've done our pre-clipping and he's bathed, brushed, dried, conditioned, and he's back on the table and we're doing our final go over. That's when you're gonna see the difference. And that's why we most always want to avoid um, giving the dog the haircut prior to bathing because it's, it's getting that coat in perfect condition is what gives us a beautiful finish, a professional finish. And if you're grooming any dog, even if it's your own dog, you want professional results. So this is how we do it. I'm gonna show you, this is gonna be pretty informative for you guys, so I'm excited to roll this demo. And when we're done, I'm gonna share my golden rule. What determines if I am going to pre-clip a dog, just right there it is. So I'll share that with you and I'll also be taking questions. So if you have questions, be absolutely sure to hold the dash bar down and create a line in front of your questions. See, I can see some in there so that I can clearly pull them out of the chat and get you an answer to your question. So for now, here's the demo. Are you ready to learn? Get your notebooks out, here it is. This is Diesel. He is a Labradoodle and he's a very big boy. Diesel comes to me every six to seven weeks. 
so we never really have a problem. So as you can see, he's not in bad shape at all. We're gonna cool him down a little bit today. I am gonna be using my number two wall stainless steel snap-on comb. Diesel just got here. He hasn't been bathed, brushed, dried or anything yet. What I am going to do first is I'm going to run a brush through him all over as I would with any dog before I bathe him. Then I'm going to do a little pre-clipping with him with my number two. And the reason I want to show you guys that today is because I feel like some of you may be trying to clip your dogs at home when the coat is just not prepared enough for a guard comb to go through it. These little guys can be quite finicky, these guard combs. If this coat isn't just right, they're not going to go through. They're going to snag in the coat. I'm going to show you how we actually can do some pre-trimming, which is going to shorten, obviously, his bathing time and his drying time. That's why I like to do a little pre-clipping on a dog as large as Diesel. I'm going to brush him out a little bit, and then I'm going to show you how I do this. We got our 10 blade and we got our number two wall snap on comb. I'm going to show you how I seat these both on my clipper. In this little slot right here in your blade, this is my 10 blade, that's what's going to seat right here on the hitch of the clipper, just like so. Set that on there like that. Now I turn my clipper on and that makes the drive move, which is going to seat the blade. Turn it off. There's these little hooks right here on the back of your guard comb. They are going to seat gently right against the bottom of your blade. They have a little bit of a spring action. Push forward and push down and it will seat on top of your blade. Let me show you one more time. Set the little teeth on there. Pull forward gently and down. They are mechanical and they're flimsy a little bit so you don't want to be aggressive. Now our snap-on comb is seated nicely and that's what i like about these wall combs they have these side guards they really seat nicely on your clipper but if you're working with a matted coat they can pop off that's what i want you to know we turn a clipper on we're ready to go now we're ready to do a little pre-trimming on diesel now remember he's not bathed he's only brushed we want our clipper to glide and roll the skin in front of the clipper this is how much this is gonna take off. He is getting a fairly short cut today, but he really needs it, trust me. Um, we're still leaving about half the length on him today. Let me bring you in a little closer and show you how I do this. Gliding and rolling the skin in front of Diesel's coat. If Diesel had mats, I would be getting stuck in his coat right now. And he doesn't have mats, so I'm able to pre-clip him. Now the pre-clipping, is just to take some hair off before the bath and before the dry so that he doesn't have to endure such a long bath and blow dry, that's all. Normally I would have just bathed and blown him out. I want you to notice right here, we're getting a little bit of resistance. I don't know if you can hear that. It's going through, but I'm feeling the resistance. I'm feeling the clipper kind of snagging in some coat. It's just because his coat is very thick and very dirty right now. So the snap-on combs, they don't like to go through a dirty coat. Right now I'm just showing you the technique. After I bathe and blow him out, I'm going to show you how we do finish cutting with snap-on combs on diesel.
Marco has been brushed before his bath. He's been bathed, force dried, and brushed again. I am brushing through him one more time. I also brushed him thoroughly after I toweled him off while he was still wet. That easily allowed me to get through any snags or any heavy areas of his coat. And now he is dry and beautiful. And I am just going through him one more time. And it's very important that I'm able to get a comb through my dog. I can get a comb easily through Diesel's coat. If I couldn't get this comb through his coat, then I would not at all be prepared to use a snap-on comb on him because that is a comb too. And if the comb won't glide through your dog's coat just like this, then the snap-on comb isn't going to either. So you're not gonna have a successful groom. Grooming is grooming, guys. I realize I'm a professional groomer, but if you're going to be doing the grooming for your dog, you need to do a professional job. I, I mean, there's just nothing. I can't tell you that there's any other way to produce the results that the dog needs to fulfill his grooming needs unless if you're going to do the grooming, you have to do a professional job. The tools and equipment that professional pet groomers use are all available to you too. So if you're not going to be regularly scheduling your dog with a groomer, and you're going to be that groomer, then you have to have a grooming table, you have to have a good clipper, you have to have the right brushes, you have to most importantly be able to properly press the coat, bathing, drying, and brushing. If you can't do that, you won't get professional results. I am just going through him one more time with the brush before we go and do our final trimming on him with our number two stainless steel snap-on comb. I do want to point out, this is the third time I've brushed Diesel today, and I'm still getting dead hair out in the coat in the brush. The reason for that, this is what will cause the mats on your dog. So that's why I can't stress enough. The properly prepared coat, being able to get a comb through him like this, properly prepared coat is the coat that's ready to be trimmed. We don't just go and comb our dogs. We brush them first. That's what removes the dead hair. The comb, just follows through and shows us how we did with our brushing. And it also is a tool that we use to lift the coat while we're clipping it. This is not a de shedding, dematting tool as far as by itself. It has to have its friend, the brush. Angel is finally ready to be trimmed. With this number two wall snap-on comb, I'm gonna start at the base of his skull. I'm gonna trim his whole body just to the base of the tail to keep this clean. I'm gonna trim his legs with this snap-on comb as well. I do have it sitting on top of a number 10 blade. That's the one I always recommend you use because then you're always ready to do a sanitary trim because you already have your number 10 blade on. After I do his body, I am going to set the length on his head and his muzzle with a different snap-on comb. So stay tuned for that. I want you to notice how easily this guard comb glides through Diesel's coat. You see that guys? Just like butter. And the reason for that is because his coat has been properly prepared for clipping with guard combs. If I did not do all the pre-work that I did on Diesel's coat prior to going and attempting to give him a haircut with snap-on combs, I would not be able to go through this coat. It wouldn't be even. It would be choppy and messy and look really bad. This is the key, guys. We're going with the lay of the coat, the way the coat grows. And I'm putting enough pressure to move the hair in front of the snap-on comb. And it's beautiful. And this is a professional result. And if you're giving your dog a haircut at home, you want professional results too. So you have to come to terms with that, guys. Otherwise, you, you're, there's no shortcuts to professional work. You know that. That's why I share these secrets with you on my channel. But look how easy and beautifully these guard combs make simple work out of shortening the length of your dog's coat. Your only other option 
if you wanted to leave more length is to hand scissor. And that is not something that most novice groomers or pet owners at home doing the grooming are experienced enough to do. It's a lot of work too. It can be fun, but it takes time to get good at it. Now I've put an A comb on over my 10 blade. I'm going to start from the base of the skull towards his nose and I'm going to set the length on the top of his head. So this is where having the different sizes of snap-on combs truly comes in handy because you can really polish your, your look here and instead of clipping him all over with the same size, you're giving, you're giving him a, you're cutting down your work here with setting the length on your snap-on comb. This is all stuff you would not have to hand scissor then. Professional shortcuts, guys. Get those ears back out of the way so we can come on up here. Get those sides of the cheeks. Good job. Right up his muzzle. We're setting the length so we don't have to set that with scissors. We will have to do some final trimming with thinning shears and scissors just to tidy everything up, but the bulk of the work is being done right now with the snap-on combs. Good job. Now I want to show you something that is a question I get often asked. Why does my blade get packed up with hair, especially my snap-on combs? Your blade's not clip nicely through your coat because they're packed with hair. I want to show you something. So periodically throughout trimming your dog when you're using a guard comb, you're going to need to remove the guard comb and you can see all the hair that's packed in here. That hinders your blade from making a smooth cut and giving you a smooth finish. So periodically you take a toothbrush or a little blade brush and you will depack your blade. And it's very important to do this or you're going to start to notice that your clipping work starts to look shabby on your dog. This is also a good time to oil it. This is Andes Clipper Oil. I put a bead here in the corner and a bead here in that corner. Let it run. Take a paper towel and just wipe all the excess off. It comes off. It's very thin oil. Reseat your snap-on comb and you're ready. Now you guys know I am using my ClipperVac system and that also helps to keep my blade from becoming packed in my clipper. But I want you to just watch how easily these guard combs are going through Diesel's coat because it's properly prepared. Without properly preparing Diesel's coat, you will not be able to use your guard combs on your dogs when you trim them. And what the guard combs do is saves you a lot of time with hand scissoring, which you may not even be capable of doing, hand scissoring your dog. That's something that takes time and experience to really learn and become good at it. So, that's where these snap-on combs save you time, give you a professional look, as well as and a nice even length of coat. Now, I'm using, I'm choosing to use the number two. This is fairly short. Is there a blade this short? No, not really. A four is close, but even a four blade is shorter than this. So that's where you, if you want to leave length, you have to use snap-on combs. And you can't use snap-on combs unless you've properly prepared the coat with brushing, bathing, and drying. Looking good there, big boy. Yeah. Oh. See, it's nice and even. Everything looks good. And we set all this length with a snap-on comb. But I don't know if you can see the texture. It leaves texture. It's not a blade. It's not going to clip the same as a blade. But it sure does look nice, and it sure does save you a lot of work. And it sets the length, so all you got to do is touch up with your scissor work. Diesel, you are amazing. Yes, you're a good boy. Say thank you. Thank you, Diesel. Thank you for helping us with our tutorial. Good job. Oh, he is such a sweet baby. But this is what we get. This was a number two stainless snap-on comb all over. 
and an A to set the length on the top of his head. Other than that, we just tidied up with the scissor work. And this was a three hour groom. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell because together we are gonna increase the bond you share with your pet and add even more value to their life. That was a good demo on pre-clipping and, and how the coat trims if you clip it before the bath and then how it trims afterwards. Way different. The coat behaves way differently, way differently before and after the bath because it's clean and it's pristine after the bath if you did it right. So what is my golden rule? I told you I was going to tell you. You might want to get your cameras ready so you can take a screenshot of the golden rule. What is my golden rule that tells me, Amy, you're gonna need to do some pre-clipping on this dog or not? Well, I have it in an image form so I can show you right here. Here it is. My golden rule of when to pre-clip a dog and when not to is if I will be removing more than one inch of coat length, if I'm gonna be removing more than one inch of coat length, I'm gonna pre-clip the dog. That's my determining factor right there, guys. Let me turn that off for you. I figured out what was wrong with my... <laughs> You're going to love this. <laughs> oh, so I know what was wrong with my notes file. It's a separate program. Somehow, I had clicked dictation on. So as I'm talking, it's repopulating my file. And all of this text is going and shooting all over the place. I'm like... Oh my gosh, they are going to die laughing when they hear this. <laughs> so that's why my notes file was going crazy. So I finally realized it was in dictation mode and it was listening to everything I said and repopulating my file. I'll never do that again. <laughs> you see how we learn from our mistakes every single time. Yes, Diesel is a gorgeous dog. He is wonderful. He is excellent to work with. And guys, I did a full video. I just pulled out a part of that video to show you tonight. That video is linked in the description below. It's, it's on my channel. I think it's about two years old, that video. I know some of you are wondering if things look different in my shop. Well, things look different right now because I have different lighting in here right now. Because lighting is always such a problem for me when, well, when I'm filming or especially with my live streams, when I'm live at the grooming table, which I am right now at the grooming table, just like always. Um, so I adjusted some lighting things and so that's why it looks a little different, but that way you don't get such a glare on me because I know when I go back and watch sometimes it is so annoying. I'm like, jeez, there's such a glare everywhere. So I try to work with the lighting as best I can. But if you're wondering when we will be in the new salon, filming and live streaming live from the grooming table that is probably you're probably not going to see the new salon until december of this year 2023 but it's coming it's they're working on it they're working on everything uh, it looks like we're a little behind in getting into the house when we hoped to which is sad but we can't control it um, they are working hard it's just a lot of work a lot of things that have to get lined up but we are going to have our own new Go Groomer grooming, filming, live streaming studio in the new home. And it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned. And you'll probably see it for the first time in December. But trust me, I'll, I'll let you know when we're there. I'm not just going to say, oh, I'll see if they notice. <laughs> I'll let you know when we're there. We had a question here. I'm diving into your questions right now. I see Lee and Mandy said, could you please tell me which shampoo you would recommend for a puppy? Thank you. I absolutely can. For puppies, I really do love the Petals and Tails shampoo and conditioner. And I want you to remember, Lee and Mandy, always to condition your dog every time following the bathing process. Always follow it up with a good quality conditioner. It totally balances out the coat, helps the dog to maintain a nice, cleaner coat in between bathing and grooming. It also helps you keep your dog brushed out easier, easier, easier <laughs> between bathing and grooming. So the Petals and Tails I love. 
I am affiliated with them, so I can save you 15% on any order, every order, and that's linked in the description below. Their products are very safe, they're very gentle, but they're very effective. But another one of my favorites for puppies is definitely the Tropiclean Hypoallergenic Puppy Shampoo. I love that shampoo. I love to use it on any dog, not just a puppy. But so for puppies, you, you don't have to think, oh, he's a puppy, I can't use anything but something that says puppy. You just want to make sure you're using safe, gentle quality products made for dogs. And pretty much every dog shampoo, whether it says it's for puppy or for any dog or a specific coat type, all of them always say best use if the dogs are at least eight weeks old or more. And I agree with that. I don't think we should be bathing our puppies until they're at least eight weeks old. And that's still pretty young, but a nice gentle bath and a nice gentle conditioner at eight to 10 weeks old is a good idea. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't even bathe a puppy any earlier than eight weeks old anyway. Okay, so that's important to note. And that's why I'm glad that you asked your question because it gave me the opportunity to say that that I don't think we need to be bathing our babies, our puppies, until they're at least eight weeks old. Um, we do have to keep them clean. We do have to um, acquaint, get them acquainted with the grooming process. That's really important too. Um, so if you're using good quality products, you're safe to bathe your puppies. Um, We've just been marketed to in a way over the years that always makes us think, oh, because it says puppy, then I can only use that. Or if it says for curly coat, I can only use that. But some of that is just all marketing, so you buy the product. But the reason the Tropiclean Hypoallergenic Puppy Shampoo is gentle, but yet it cleanses well, is because there aren't any dyes, there aren't any detergents. Um, but it does have surfactants in it like all dog shampoo does. So, but it is very gentle. And I like to use that puppy shampoo on a dog that may seem to be a little reactive. And some of my senior pets, they have very sensitive skin. Remember our senior dogs as they age, their skin is thinning. So that means the nerves are actually getting closer to the skin's surface because their skin is thinning, just like when we age our skin thins. So remember that about your senior dogs, guys, that they may seem to become more touchy because they actually are. They're more sensitive to the touch. So don't forget that about our senior dogs. And when we're working with babies, with puppies, just remember this is all new to them. You know, everything about their life is new to them. They're used to sharing life with mommy dog and litter mates for the most part, that's who they're with all the time. There is humans there taking care of them and socializing with them, which is very important. But they are most comfortable with their own kind, especially as a puppy, because that's what they learned. That's where they've been for the last eight to 10 weeks is with their own kind. So when they come to live with us humans, we are a different species. We speak, they communicate in other ways. Um, and we have to both learn how to communicate together, dogs and humans, when we start living a life together. So don't forget that. They don't speak English. When we're rambling on, oh, you're so cute today, they hear, wah, 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 wah. it means nothing to them. Doesn't, they don't know what we're saying. <laughs> I have to remind myself that too, as I'm always talking to my dog, and they're, just, they're looking at me like, they'll pick out a word that they know, and they go, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, that's right. You don't speak my language. <laughs> so that's a great question, Lee and Mandy, and I hope that the, that answers your question for you. Petals and Tails is a great one. You can save some money using my discount code, 15% off, or you can go for that Tropiclean Hypoallergenic Puppy Shampoo, but always condition. Always, always, always. Okay, Lee says... Is your pre-clipping blade a different blade than the finished blade? That's a good question. A lot of people ask that, and I know a lot of groomers like to use a blade that's one step higher, one step longer than the blade that they're hoping to use as the finishing blade. And you can do that, because here's the thing about pre-clipping. Pre-clipping, your length 
is going to be uneven because the coat's mashed down. It's all stuck to itself. It's not lifted, you know, through the bathing, brushing, and drying process. That's when we get a precise clip on our pet's coat. But in the pre-clipping stage, even if we brush it all out, it's still clumpy. A lot of the hair clumps together. It's not going to be beautiful, pristine, and plush like our finished clipper work. So if you want to be safe, let's say you want to trim your dog with a um, quarter of an inch guard comb as your final trim. So you may say, okay, then I'm going to pre-clip with a three-eighths of an inch just to give myself a little buffer so I know I'm getting a nice smooth clip. Do I do that? No, I don't. If I'm going to use a quarter of an inch to clip the dog, I'll use a quarter of an inch to pre-clip the dog too. That's just my rule of thumb. That's what I do and it always has seemed to work well for me. So, but there's nothing wrong with playing it safe. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with saying, I want a quarter of an inch as my final length. Let me go with a three eighths of an inch guard comb, which is one step higher, one step longer to do the pre-trimming. That's fine. It's okay. You will be taking more off when you go to do your final clip through with a quarter of an inch, but the bulk of the hair will be, you would have trimmed it anyway in the pre-trimming. So that, that's a great question. Um, and you will see a lot of groomers doing it that way. And that's okay. We all do have different preferences of how we work. Um, we, the end goal is always the same. The dog is happy, healthy, and looks beautiful. So good question, Lee. Um, one little Ozzy, what a cool name. I bet that's your dog's name, Ozzy. One little Ozzy says, hi, Amy. I use Dawn dish soap on my dog for shampoo and it stuck to my dog's skin, of course, um, where it was pelted. Um, what is the best blade? home to use. If your dog is pelted, that means matted, you will never get a guard comb through your dog. That's why I showed you that demo earlier. This one. I'll just pull a little piece of this up. I want to, since we're talking about matting and pelting, this is matted and pelting. The only thing you're going to get through that coat is a number seven. You will get a 10 blade through it, but if you can avoid using a 10 blade, I would because it is very short. It leaves no length of coat. And since we're on the topic, one little Ozzy, you use Dawn dish soap. I don't know why in the world you would do that. You certainly aren't taking advice from me. You never ever put Dawn dish soap on your dog's skin. Don't use your body wash. Don't use any other soap antibacterial soap that you get to wash your hands, Dawn dish soap, don't ever use that on your dog. Why? I'm going to give you a lesson why. Because Dawn dish soap is a detergent. It is a degreaser. Degreaser means stripping. Your dog's skin and coat has natural oils in it. It produces its own natural oils. Sometimes those oils are produced in abundance, like on oh, my little English bulldog, and we need to rebalance it. But rebalancing your dog's oils is not using a harsh detergent. That is actually going to make your dog produce more oils. We don't want that. So the Dawn dish soap will provide no benefit. Um, even if your dog's coat is matted, is stinky, whatever, there is no benefit to putting Dawn dish soap on your dog's skin. It is harsh. It can be abrasive to the skin. It can cause your dog to go into a skin frenzy and it may itch itself so bad that it turns into a skin infection. It's extremely drying. It's no way balancing the oils. It's stripping the oils. So Dawn offers no solutions for when we bathe our dogs, not one not one. So don't ever use Dawn dish soap, please. Don't ever do that. Um, hopefully that explains why. And then remember I said shampoo um, strips out oils and, you know, stuff from the dog's coat. Well, our pet shampoos are not quite as harsh, but they are still a shampoo. So they will take some of the grease, some of the, some of the grime out of the coat, 
But that's where it's always important to come back in with conditioner because conditioner puts the hydration back into the skin and coat. It also balances out the hydration factor of the dog's skin and coat, which is what the conditioner is the magic tool in your groom, period. It is the best thing for your dog too, if you're bathing your dog, to definitely follow up with conditioner because it's putting back all the good things and it's balancing out the skin and coat so that the dog is not itchy and does not have dry skin. If your dog has dry skin and you don't condition, you may wanna think, I need to condition, okay? Cause it's so, so important. And I have definitely learned that in my Science of the Skin course. Um, we studied that heavily and I was a firm believer. I started implementing it in every dog that I groom in my salon. Every dog in my salon gets conditioned. And wow, the differences that I saw. And your dog will dry faster, believe it or not, if you're using a quality conditioner and thoroughly rinsing it from the coat. So I do have a, a bathing video on my channel that's really good. And I really just tell you all this stuff as I'm going through it on a cute little Havanese white dog. Um, so definitely if you're having questions with bathing, please go watch that bathing uh, workshop, I think it was called. And it, it's very informative and it will answer your questions, I promise, and give you more confidence when you're bathing your dog to know that you're doing the right things. Because that's, I know you all want to do the right things. You just don't know. There's so, so much information out there, good, bad, and ugly. So we have to, um, we have to be smart about the information and the advice that we take when we're working with our dog's skin and coat, especially. It can really throw them into a frenzy. Um, Lee also says, after dog is finished being groomed, should I blow the loose cut hairs that fell on the dog? This is what I've been doing. Sure, you, you, you don't need to like, you know, get your force dryer really kick in there, but you can simply just hold it back and kind of blow your dog off a little bit because some of the little clippings will still be laying in the coat. But I'll be honest with you, as soon as you're done grooming your dog and you get them off the table and put them on the floor, what's the first thing they do? They shake. He's like, Whoa. they're getting it off. So they're gonna shake it off right away. They all do. All the dogs that I groomed all these years, as soon as they're done, they shake, 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 shake. They get it all off. So you don't really have to do that, but um, a lot of people do choose to do that, and that's okay. You can. Um, Aang says, hi, Amy. What is the brand that you use clippers and the size of thinning shears, thinning scissors? Where can I buy them? I'm from the Philippines. Wow. Well, we're very happy to have you here. Thank you for coming and joining us live from the grooming table. So here's the thing with um, me giving advice to someone who is out of the country. I am not always sure what brands are available to you. I'm not always sure if the same brands available to me in the United States are available to you in the Philippines or Australia or Canada. I mean, I, I find this a lot that some of the brands aren't. But I will tell you that I, Kenji, Kenji has a new brand called Joy Z, J-O-Y-Z-Z-E. -Z -E. And they are making some fantastic clippers, fantastic. And I do know that Joy Z and Kenji, because they're the same kind of, they ship worldwide. Now you may pay quite a bit for the shipping. I'm not sure what the shipping costs will be, but I do want you to know that you can get their clippers, their shears from Joy Z or Kenchi. They do ship worldwide. So I know that for a fact. Um, so that's probably what I would suggest to you because I do love my Wall KM 10 clipper as well. I'm just not sure if you can get it in the Philippines. So that is a great clipper. It's called the Wall W A H L KM 10. That's a great one. Now, Joy Z does have, and they ship out worldwide, they have the Raptor, and they are probably coming out with another clipper that they're talking about, maybe. Maybe? So, you'll have some options there, and they're good clippers. They really are, really good. I, I use the Raptor all the time, 
You guys have seen it all over Instagram with me now. I've been testing it. And so I can tell you, yeah, yeah, I still like it. I still like it. Because I want to use these <coughs> tools and products. I don't want to use them one time and tell you, this is great. Well, what if I use it on a different coat type? And then I say, you know what? Ooh, it's not great anymore on this coat type. So I like to be able to keep testing things over and over again and saying, yep, yep, still loving it. So the shears, the same, um, if you go with Kenchi, which is K-E-N-C-H-I-I dot com, they have a lot of different shears um, depending on your needs. My blending shear, which is the sapphire shear made by Kenchi, that is a fantastic soft blender. I use that a lot for finishing work to just soften any of my scissor lines. And that is the Sapphire Blending Shear by Amy Lee. That's me. And uh, I think a lot of you have it and love it. I love it. I use that shear so much. So hopefully that helps you, Aying. And thank you so much for, for joining us from the Philippines. That's exciting. See, we come from all over, don't we, guys? Uh, you're welcome, little Ozzy. It's no problem. I know it's tough sometimes to understand what to do. I'm so glad you guys asked your questions. Now, um, I don't see any more questions right there, so I want to tell you guys a few announcements, a, a couple cool things, okay? <clears throat> don't forget my golden rule of when to pre-clip is if I will be removing more than one inch of coat from this groom, then I will pre-clip. That's my golden rule. So I'm sharing it with you. All right, first announcement. You d I wanted to announce it again. I have a weekly newsletter now that comes out every Friday at 8 a.m. It is an email newsletter. It is so cool. So every Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can receive my free Go Groomer exclusive newsletter directly to your email inbox, written by me. Everything in that newsletter is my feelings, my thoughts, and my secrets of the grooming industry that I share with you. So I decided I wanted to make a newsletter because I think that's very exciting. <laughs> you know, extra, extra, read all about it, that kind of thing. It just gets me excited. And I, I love writing. So that works out great for me. So in the description below, you will find a link to sign up completely free for that newsletter. And if you sign up, please always remember to check your email every Friday for this amazing dog grooming newsletter packed full of all my dog grooming secrets to successful dog grooming. But I also want to tell you, sometimes our email, if we've never received an email from someone, our email program will throw it into spam or junk mail. So if you're not receive, if you sign up for the newsletter and you're not receiving it every Friday, please look in your junk mail folder of your email program or your spam folder. Okay it could be lost in there or there's another one like my email has a promotions tab that it lumps a bunch of of um, emails into that feeling like it's for sales or whatever you know so yeah email everything's very controlling these days our software software is very controlling isn't it another announcement is channel members calling all hounds are you in here I see a lot of you in here I will see you Saturday, this Saturday, October 14th at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our monthly live Zoom learning session. I cannot wait. The topic is flawlessly blend your clipper work into your scissor work. If you're not a channel member and you would love to take your dog growing knowledge to a new level, there is a link in the description of this video or you can click the join button where you can become a channel member, also known as a hound. That's my channel members, they're my hounds. So Go Groomer channel members enjoy monthly live learning sessions and they receive exclusive content and free downloads with every learning session. Once a month we get together. It is fantastic, I absolutely love it. And I love my members, I love what we're sharing and doing together, it is, it's awesome. I, I love it. So if you're interested in that, guys, you can be a hound. You can be. We welcome all hounds. You can be. It's $4.99 a month. It's all done through YouTube. I don't process any of that money. 
YouTube does. <laughs> so I can't help you if you have questions on it. Our next live from the grooming table is scheduled for Monday, October 23rd, two weeks. Remember, we go every other Monday. So it is scheduled for October 23rd at 5, 5.30 Eastern Standard Time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And what is the topic? I bet you want to know. The topic is what to ask yourself before you commit to becoming a dog groomer or what to ask yourself before committing to grooming your own dog. Boom. It's going to be great. I have some great ideas and thoughts I need to share with you on that. So come back here in two weeks and I will definitely give you all that information. It's going to be worth it. The information that I will share with you during that live stream is going to be extremely valuable. I promise you. I promise you. I won't hold anything back either because I love you that much. Jenny Sutherland, super chat and love you, Amy. Jenny, I love you too and you know it. Gosh, thank you for the super chat and don't think you're getting out of here without a salute. You are getting saluted. Thank you, Jenny. You are the best. You're doing great things. I see you. I'm watching you. I see what you're doing in our private Facebook group. You're doing great things. You all are. Thank you for the super chat, Jenny. I really appreciate it. All right, guys, without further ado, I'm going to leave you with one more little thing. I'm going to leave you with the actual original Super Bowl commercial for the farmer's dog just so you can get your tissues out, right, Uncle Sam's niece? I see you in there. All right, don't cry, it's a good thing. We love our dogs, we wanna feed them what they're meant to eat. If you are interested in a free trial of the farmer's dog, I decided, decided to partner with them because I feed my dogs a farmer's dog and I strongly believe in the food. I can offer you a 100% free trial of the food for your dogs. There's a link in the description below and if, if you're just curious about trying it, if you want your dog to, you know, you don't want to commit to it, just want to see if they like it, the trial is perfect for that. So I will definitely see you guys in two weeks. I love you. Members, I'll see you Saturday. And anybody who signs up for the newsletter, you'll be hearing from me on Friday, Friday morning. So here is your Farmer's Dog Super Bowl commercial. Keep being awesome. I love you guys. And thank you for putting up with all of my technical difficulties. I'm always having them. You guys are great, though. You never complain. I love you. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for coming and joining me live from the grooming table. I can talk. I'll see you in two weeks. Keep being great. I'll always take care of you. Let's not do that again, okay? Don't worry, dog, about the rest of our lives. Through the thick and thin, I'll be there by your side. Cause when I see those big, beautiful eyes looking into <laughs> my eyes, I wanna hold. to have and to bear from this day forward. Come on, baby. Yes, I do, man.